all of tonight's rescues are true stories. We've sometimes used actors or stuntmen, but everything you see and hear is based on the accounts of the people involved. They've helped us to reconstruct events as they happen. Tonight on 999, a deadly swarm of bees, how a paramedic risked his own life to save a man from being stung to death. Do's and don'ts on how you should deal with bees and wasps. And one man and his dog, vital members of a search and rescue team on a life-saving mission in the Lake District. There are 40,000 beekeepers in the United Kingdom and at any one time 30 billion bees. So it's hardly surprising if occasionally somebody gets stung. Bees aren't normally aggressive creatures and usually only sting as a means of defense when they feel the hive or the queen is under threat. And once it's delivered its sting, the bee will die. One day in June, Herbert Ringer from Wyndham in Norfolk was tending his hives as he'd done countless times before. There are about 20,000 species of bees that we know of. Most of these are solitary. And then there are social bees like bumblebees and the bee we keep in hives, the honeybee. They've been about for at least 30 million years. We've got evidence of this by uh, bees trapped in amber. In a normal colony, which a beekeeper would have in his garden, there are up to 50 to 80,000 bees, the queen and a few drones. And these will be looked at regularly and managed through the active season. When you actually attack a hive, and that's what the bee imagines you're doing, it will sting to defend itself. It will find a vulnerable spot, it will penetrate with its sting, and this releases a, a pheromone, that's a chemical message that attracts other bees to the area. So the person who is next to the hive and very near to the hive are liable to be thought to be attacking the hive if it's disturbed. Peter Gregory, his lodger Ross Wallace, and Peter's son Michael are all played by actors. It was about half past five in the evening. Um, I was sitting in the garden, attempting to do the crossword, not particularly well, yet again. Michael was playing in the garden. It was the start of the school holidays. Uh, and Peter was taking the washing down off the line. Hey, Ross. When a bee you stings, it'll penetrate, and the sting is rather a marvelous device that consists of um, a main sheath with barbs that get stuck in the flesh. The bee panics and it may be able to extract itself. Normally it can't and when it tries to escape it ruptures. It leaves behind the sting, the muscles and the nerves all capable of continuing the painful reaction for quite some time afterwards. To certain people who are allergic to bee stings, a single sting could be fatal. Suddenly, I heard a loud scream. I, I looked up and saw Peter waving his arms around the air and whirling around. It was almost as if he had had an epileptic fit. I started to move over towards him to see exactly what's wrong. Peter? I, n I noticed there was a haze around his head and I suddenly became aware of a loud buzzing noise. It became only too obvious that he was being attacked by a large number of bees, which presumably had come from the hives next door. I saw him fall to the ground and bury his face in the grass. In the event, what I tried to do to help him didn't really help at all. I acted instinctively and went indoors and got a tea towel, thinking just like one would swat a moth, I could swat the bees off him. This quite plainly only made the situation worse because it made them very, very cross, even crosser than they were. I then went back indoors and got a bucket of water and threw the water over him, again to no avail. In fact, it made everything even worse. 
worse than it had been. Michael, at this stage, was still in the garden. He was transfixed, as you would imagine. So I shouted at him to get indoors as quickly as he could. Michael, get in the house! Michael, I said get in the house! I was conscious that we had an emergency on our hands and that there was a race against time. Ross knew he needed urgent medical help for Peter, but in his haste, he broke the key in the front door lock. It was now up to Michael to raise the alarm. I wasn't scared. I can't really remember what I was feeling. I was going, I've got to get help. I've got to get help. And I, I just, I, I made my mind think, I've got to go my fastest. I've got to go the fastest I've ever gone. The Gregories didn't have their own phone, so Michael ran to a neighbor's house to ring for an ambulance but he was worried that it wasn't going to get there in time. I don't know why I started crying, because I wasn't really that frightened. I was never totally, I was never really that frightened. I was worried that my dad would die, really. Although Michael was upset, he was still thinking clearly. Having called 999, he ran to the local pub to get more help for his father. On that evening, Michael came into the pub very distressed, crying. His father had been attacked by a swarm of bees. Panic set in. I ran up the garden, picked up a can of diesel, knowing that smoke would deter the bees. And the garden rake, why I picked up the garden rake, I really don't know. Come on, you two. I asked a couple of regulars to come with me. Go through the alley. Dropped Michael off at a neighbour's and ran into the garden to see what we could do. The ambulance crew had the 10 minute drive to prepare themselves for what they might find. One main concern was that he had received a sting to his airway and the localised swelling had in fact closed it off. Or two, that in fact he had collapsed with anaphylactic shock, meaning that he was having an adverse allergic reaction to the sting, which needs the immediate administration of adrenaline. When Joe Gadgick and his friends arrived, they decided to try and smoke the bees off Peter. He lay there quite prostrate, quite still. We didn't really know whether he was conscious or unconscious or whatever. And he never murmured. He was quite lifeless and the bees were all over him, literally all over him. Grass, David. Come on. It was literally panic. The three of us were running about the garden basically like headless chickens, not really knowing what to do. And we were just panicking, running backwards and forwards, getting stung and achieving very little. Now it was all down to the ambulance crew, David Money and Steve Mortley. David jumped out and went ahead of me. I collected some equipment and went to follow him. But before I could get anywhere, David was coming in the opposite direction towards me, waving his arms about his head, waving off a load of bees that are actually chasing him up the side of the house. Steve, the back garden's full of bees. I'm going next door for the beekeeper. Right. I went down the side of the house to look at the scenario for myself. In the middle of the lawn was the patient, and he was completely motionless. I've never seen so many bees around a body before. It was like he was a beehive. Can you hear me? Ambulance service, can you hear me? He still didn't respond. I thought he was unconscious or even dead. But I decided that if I was going to go in, I was only going to go in once, and so he was coming out with me, no matter what. So I went back to the vehicle, put on my jacket, gloves, and collected the trolley. I didn't feel scared at the time. When someone dials 999, the emergency services turn up and then feel that they can't help. There's nowhere else to go. That You are the bottom line. You are the end of the line. You're called, you turn up, you have to deal with it. Can you hear me, mate? Yeah. What's your name? He responded. Yeah. So I then knew that he had a clear airway and was breathing adequately. Soon after, my partner Dave and the beekeeper came back round. How is he, Steve? Is he talking to you? The air was full of bees. They were hovering around Peter's head and crawling over his body. The noise, you could hear them. They were so angry. We had to act quickly because at any moment he could go into full-blown anaphylactic shock. The priority now was to get Peter to Norwich Hospital in the fastest possible time. Steve radioed ahead to warn the casualty department what to expect when they arrived. 
All David could do on the journey was keep Peter's condition stable. There we go, my man. Just breathe naturally. You're going to feel a scratch coming now, Peter. Scratch coming now. Anaphylactic shock from, from stings is recognised, but really is quite rare. Nobody in our department can remember seeing um, a multiple bee sting of this sort. When Peter arrived in the department, he was given drugs from three main categories. The first drug he was given was adrenaline, which is a naturally occurring drug within the body that combats the effects of the allergic reaction within the body. The second drug he was given was an, an antihistamine uh, drug, which combats one of the components of the venom that uh, the bee releases. The third drug he was given was uh, a steroid-based drug, which generally dampens down the body's reaction to uh, allergy. Right. OK, so the last bottle of drugs are going to be given you. Peter had over 100 stings removed from his face, neck and back. After a short stay in hospital, he returned home, well enough to reflect on what he'd been through. When, when the bees first attacked, and the buzz wasn't right. Um, this was angry. This was very, very angry. It was a roar. And I, sp I suppose it, worse still, because a couple of, a couple of the bees had got into my ear, and, and of course they were... <laughs> and that made, that made the, uh, the, the roaring even, even louder. I wasn't in a lot of pain, actually. The, the pain itself, um, after the first couple of initial stings, I think that I went over the pain threshold, and it was it was just dullness. It was, um, and I suppose I went through my mind. Oh my God, this is it, this is it. I, I'm, I'm finished. When I came home from the hospital on the day after, I thought, right, I've got to do something about these bees. At my I'm going down where they were working in the bush at the bottom of my garden. I put my hand into the bush and let a couple of them climb on my hand, and, which I did. And I had no reaction to them at all. They just came onto my hand. They flew off quite comfortably. And I don't think I've got any fear. I, I, it's like getting, getting straight back onto a push bike after, after falling off. Whether I'm totally now immune to bee stings, I don't know, but I... To be honest, I wouldn't like to be stung again. <laughs> this case was very unusual indeed, and it's not clear why the bees behaved the way they did. They may have reacted to the smell of the washing or to an unusual concentration of pheromones, the chemical messengers that bees use to attract each other. When somebody gets stung, friends may try their best to help, but make matters worse by doing the wrong thing. It's very unlikely that you'll have to defend yourself against a swarm. But if you or somebody with you does get stung, medical experts have this advice. If you're attacked by a swarm of bees or wasps, try not to panic. The worst thing you can do is run around or flail your arms about like Peter Gregory. Bees respond aggressively to fast movements. So move slowly indoors or into shrubs or trees. It'll confuse the bees, and they prefer sunlight to shade. Bees aim for your highest point, usually your face and hair, so if you're attacked, crouch down and cover your head. Don't kill the wasps or bees. When they sting or they're squashed, they give off a pheromone to signal danger, which makes it more likely that others will attack. If you see someone being badly stung, move them away quickly. Don't throw water over the bees like Ross Wallace did. It'll only antagonize them. If you don't remove a sting, it'll continue to pump venom for two or three minutes. But don't pull it out. You'll only risk squeezing the poison in further. Instead, scrape the sting away with a knife or your fingernail. In rare cases, the venom can trigger an extreme allergic reaction called anaphylactic shock. This is what happened to Stephen Barnes, whose story we told in the first series of 999. It causes a sudden fall in blood pressure and difficulty breathing. If, like Stephen, someone starts reacting badly, call for help straight away. They'll need an injection of adrenaline as soon as possible. Lay them down and raise their legs. This will increase the blood flow to the heart and brain. If they lose consciousness, put them into the recovery position and keep them warm. The allergy builds up gradually in your system. The more often you're stung, the worse it gets. 
Some people suffer a similar reaction if they're highly allergic to foods like shellfish, nuts and egg white. If you're worried about your allergy, consult your doctor. If it's very severe, you may be given a syringe of adrenaline to keep with you in case of emergency. You can also take a course of treatment to increase your immunity. It'll mean three years of regular injections with wasp or bee venom, which will offer some protection if you're stung. The treatment's available on the National Health Service, but in many places there's a long waiting list.